Glad to see you're still with us. Or should I say surprised? I admire your powers of endurance. As I noted earlier, the scoundrel responsible for Egar is Arch Hall Senior. He started as an actor in 1938 in Overland Stage Raiders, one of the 80 or so B-grade westerns John Wayne made back in the 1930s, but best remembered for being Louise Brooks's final film. She decided if she couldn't get better offers than this, she might as well abandon her acting career, and Arch would have done well to follow her example. Instead, he went on to minor roles in several B-grade westerns in the 1940s. Egar was his only film as director, for which he hid behind the lie Nicholas Merriweather. He also played the part of Robert Miller, under the name of William Waters. I understand why he didn't want to own up, but I've exposed his deception all the same. It was my moral duty, after all. Yes, that's him wearing the silly safari suit and pith helmet. Even his costume decisions were bad, except for Roxy's swimsuit, of course. Our leading lady is Marilyn Manning. Her bikini and that short skirt she so kindly wears are this film's only redeeming features. The Sadist is her only other film, which is her career's only redeeming feature. It won't take me long to talk about the talents of Arch Hall Jr. I'll list them alphabetically. Hair. Arch Jr. only acted in films produced by Arch Sr. And this wasn't due to family loyalty. Everyone else knew better than to cast him, especially if they'd seen Egar. Not even beach party movies would have him. His other films you can count on the fingers of one hand with digits to spare. Wild Guitar in 1962, The Sadist in 1963, The Nasty Rabbit in 1964. It's nay ordinary, bunny. Doubtless you've already recognised Richard Keel in the title role. He achieved fame as the villainous Jaws in The Spy Who Loved Me and Moonraker. The positive impression he made in these films was due to his height, an amazing 219 centimetres. That's 7 feet 2 inches, 1 and a quarter fathoms, or 3 and a half Danny DeVitos. Uh, that, and because he was working alongside Roger Moore, an actor so truly terrible that his cars had more personality, an idea fully exploited by Knight Rider. Now you know why Richard Keel was entrusted with so few lines in the James Bond films. Listening to his dialogue delivery as Egar, I was irresistibly reminded of Sylvester Stallone's big dramatic scene near the end of First Blood. Nearly impossible to understand a word he's saying. Though with Mr. Stallone, that may be a blessing in disguise. The dialogue in some of his films is so abysmal that when you do understand what he's saying, you wish you didn't. But I digress again. In the same year as Egar, Richard Keel violated good taste again by playing an untrustworthy alien determined to eat long pig in the above average, fondly remembered Twilight Zone episode, To Serve Man. A few years later, Richard played the title character in the Monkeys episode, I Was a Teenage Monster, and as the swinging android, he had several good lines. When the experiment goes wrong, there are some very funny moments when he talks like a hippie and then like an effeminate interior decorator. It's probably the artistic high point of his acting career. In 1992, an injury in a car crash permanently affected his sense of balance, and since nobody is prepared to stand within 2.2 metres of the unsteady giant, he has all but retired. And speaking of unbalanced, here's the rest of Egar. Smooth Link. 